What is this song? Oh, I know what you're thinking. Uh -huh. Classic, casual, friendly. Yeah. How dare you? Well, at least that's what I would think whenever someone brought this up. Yeah. But this idea has a bit more weight than you'd think. Alright. I mean, before the game was released, even the developers said that this game is made to be casual friendly. As quoted from the Computer it's, Gaming yeah, Magazine, it's easier which had an exclusive preview of the game all the way back in 2001. This was during the quote, hardcore era of MMOs. XP. I would have never played RuneScape. I hated RuneScape. I thought it was dumb. Not RuneScape. Whatever that is. Ever, EverQuest. Yeah, EverQuest. I would have never played EverQuest because I thought it was just a bullshit-ass game. And it looked like trash. So, like, yeah. For anybody that doesn't know, like, they made WoW specifically to compete and take the casual audience away from EverQuest. And, obviously, it worked. Loss, item loss, and even permanent death were not only present, but even common amongst the genre. And the, the, the gameplay just sucks. Died, a piece Holy of you shit. died with it. Okay, maybe that's a bit dramatic. Yeah. But still, you'd be pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So can you really consider classic World of Warcraft casual? Yeah. Well, that's what we're setting out to answer today. Yeah, MMOs 100%. are complex, so it's hard to pin them down into just casual or just hardcore. Okay. But in this video, I wanted to cover each end of the spectrum and bring up points for and against this idea, and at the end, try to make a conclusion. Okay. I think we should first define the term casual. Gaming has changed over the years. Gone are the days of retro gaming, where successfully finishing a game was never guaranteed. This was during yeah, that's so fucking unfortunate, man. Like, I remember I would literally fucking, that Blockbuster right here, I would write my fucking initial Z on the Super Nintendo cartridges that I would rent, so I could go back and rent them again, and continue the same game that I was playing. Like, that was all the time, man. Like, this is like, that's like fucking peak 90s. And, yeah, yeah, my mom actually gave me the idea. And, uh, anyway, so, I, 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 I don't know, like, what makes it casual to you guys? Be before he gets into it, what, what, what in your mind defines a casual? Life was pretty good back then? Yeah, because we were all, like, fucking, like, nine years old, and we didn't even know what taxes were. Like, so, yeah, of course life was good. Uh, two hours a day. So, yeah, I think if you play two hours a day or less, is that a, is that a casual argument? I mean, the way that I've always looked at, like, kind of, it, it depends, because there's, like, so many other different ways of playing, like, classic. Two to three hours, yeah. Two hours a day, two hours a week? I don't know. I would say less than, less than maybe, like, ten hours a week. How about that? Less than ten hours a week. Does that seem fair? Yeah, maybe somewhere around there. I mean, I, I guess everybody defines casual differently. I mean, you know, it, it just depends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, 10 hours a week or less. Maybe even like 15 hours a week or less. It depends on like, I don't know. Everybody has a different definition. Let's just keep going. Let's see what his is. During a time where you rented games because you didn't have any friends to play sports with. Yep. And then you wasted a few days of your miserable, pathetic existence. Yep. Trying to get past the first level of super ghouls and ghosts. Yeah. Give up. Yeah. Break something. Shit. Yep. And then return it. Yep. Back then, That's right. it was advantageous to make Ooh, these games possible. Whether they were eating quarters through an arcade machine or farming little kids' allowance yep. through Blockbuster, one thing was clear: they were effing hard. And if you managed to finish yeah. one, it was an accomplishment. They were ridiculously fucking hard. However, as I said, gaming has changed. It sure Being has. A game today is now an expectation. And the outliers today are the ones that are just mildly difficult. Oh no. It's one of the reasons why the Dark Souls franchise is so yep. popular. It's one of the few mainstream games today where you can just mindlessly slog your way through it with little to no punishment. Today, many say it's unforgiving and hardcore, but if it were released 30 years ago, most- of Anything's gonna be unforgiven. Unforgiving and hardcore if you try to take on five of the fucking uh, three of the fucking things while you're standing in the poison and blight town While you've got the little buzzards or little little wasps throwing dirt at you Whoever the fuck wherever the fuck he got this footage the guy is an idiot the guy is a straight fucking idiot like you all you, and It's like look he has the Drake sword too He's got the Drake sword and he's he's playing like that The like, guy I, I can't it's not from me. All right. I did not do this like, I figured this out the first fucking time. Like, this is so you guys know, there are people that are even worse than me at this game. 
Most would say that it's run in the mill in terms of difficulty. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. So why am I talking about all of this? Well, the basic point I'm getting here is that collectively, the definition of what is casual and what is hardcore has yeah. changed. Quite a bit, in fact. And this brings us to World of Warcraft. Okay. Released 15 years ago now, most people would say that the World of Warcraft was casual. And during in the time it was, yeah. again, no permanent death, no item loss on death, and not even any XP mm -hmm. loss. It was unique in the sense that you didn't want to break your keyboard in half every time you died. And it's one of the major reasons why it became so successful. It appealed to that untapped mainstream audience of people who wanted an MMO to play and not feel like they were going through a torture rack every time they logged on. Yeah, I mean, but the question I, remains, I would never, I never want to play EverQuest. Up? There's just so much anxiety about it. It's like if I die, I lose experience and like all this other bullshit. Like, of course, I don't want to deal with that. Nobody would want to deal with that. God damn. Today. Well, the let's anxiety get into it. about a game, dude. I figured the best way to do this is to tackle it categorically. Let's take a look at the aspects that most would deem to be casual and uh, hardcore with classic, okay. and sort of compared that to not only the current game, but also just gaming in general. So, for casual, the biggest points supporting this that I always bring up are all of the daily and weekly stuff that you're lacking compared to current. Yeah. In the current game, which at the time that this video was made is BFA, you have so right. many things you need to do, either daily or weekly, in order to efficiently gear your character. You have your daily emissary quest. I feel like that's and not casual. Quests, which you get every eight hours on three different continents. Yeah, that's not casual your at all. Your faction assaults, which pop up periodically. Your war fronts, which pop yep. up in multiple stages. You want to do the scenario once per stage for the cache, and the world boss for some gear, the quest for Azerite. And you want to do your weekly Mythic Plus, your weekly island expeditions to fill up your bar for that Azerite. This is a lot of list. And the PvP. Oh, for yep, PvP don't forget gear. about that one. And of course your weekly Raids. rating, yep. which with the advent of, of Titan Forging and four difficulties, Mythic you can plus. go through them all and can realistically yep. get gear upgrades. A lot and of in chores. Classic, you have your weekly raids. The amount of things that keep you on the treadmill in yep. the current game is staggering compared to Classic. Well, yeah. No one is forcing you or putting a gun to your head to do everything. But as I said, you need to do a large portion of this stuff. If well, they are, really. Because if you're in a mythic guild, right, and you're in like a competitive raiding guild at least, or at least like a guild that is competitive, and the players in the guild are competitive against each other for raid spots, you are absolutely forced to do these kinds of things. Because if you're not doing them, somebody else in the raid is doing them. And if they're doing them and you're not doing them, they get a spot and you don't. That's what sucks about it. Uh, is it basically caters to the highest common denominator and then everybody else has to play and basically accommodate to that. It sucks. And by the way, guys, as soon as we finish this, we're doing Anixia, okay? So if you're unsaved to Anixia, please fucking log on. Please message me. We need to make sure that we get this shit done, okay? We're going to have basically an hour and a half to do Anixia. So please log on and get this done. Yeah, anybody who's not saved to Anixia. If you want to optimize your character... It comes yep. with the territory of online gaming. Even if it's right. not directly, there's a competitive aspect to nearly every single one. Of course. It's like when you say you wish flying wasn't in the game, and then someone yep. says, well, just don't fly then. Well, that's easy to say when the game is balanced around it. Yeah, just go ahead and put yourself at a massive disadvantage. Yeah, nobody's gonna handicap themselves. It's the themselves. same idea with all of this daily and weekly stuff to gear your character. Yeah, that, that's retarded. And even if you don't get gear, there's always Azerite power tied to all of this stuff to yep. serve as the carrot on a stick, so to speak. All of this takes time, and a lot of it if you do everything. That's about right. For Classic, however, you do your raids on one difficulty once a week. And, and it's done. not to say that Classic isn't time-consuming. It's incredibly yeah. time-consuming. All MMOs are. But it doesn't come from a place of urgency. When you implement so many daily and weekly aspects... I think the word that he used there is really good. Urgency. You know, whenever you have this kind of shit where you feel like you have to play the game constantly, that's urgency. And I don't like that. I never have. I, I think that's complete fucking dog shit. You know, they, they create this feeling where you have to do it. Oh, man, I have to do this. Oh, man, I have to do this. You know, it's like if you're not playing retail WoW, you feel like you're missing out in a way. And in Classic, like, yeah, you feel like you're missing out if you don't do your raid. Yeah, but it's just like a matter of, of the amount of time and amount of times you need to log on, right? You log on once a week, you do your raid, versus in BFA, you log on every day to do something or you miss out. Yeah, it's just too many, too many times that you miss out, and I think it's fatiguing for players.
aspects into your game. You're creating the sense of urgency to rush, 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 yeah. and get it done in time, or yeah. else you're gonna lose out. Yeah. Everyone else is doing the war front, so you better too. You're almost out of time. So, what ends up happening is that a lot of the times you do this stuff because you feel obligated to do it so you don't fall behind, yep. instead of coming from a place of fun. At least that's the way I feel. Whereas in Classic, since you don't have this urgency, nope. you can do everything at your own pace and when you feel is right, thus more casual friendly. Yeah. Another point that many people will bring up in Classic is that the classes are more straightforward and easy to understand. Yeah, of course Let's be are. honest with ourselves here. The classes in Classic, at the very basic level, are easy to understand. I'm and also, in some circumstances, at the more advanced levels, they are also very easy to understand. Such as this class that we're looking at right here, and the damage breakdown that we see. Yeah, this is actually a, a very, very easy to understand class. I mean, the rotation for Frost Mages is Frostbolt. That's it. Yeah, Just that's the whole thing. And guess what? They top the meters. Are you capable of pressing one button? Well, come on in. No. I've been very vocal about class balance in Classic versus Current. I prefer Classic overall because I feel like yeah. the classes are more unique. They all have their own roles to fill, and in the current game, I feel like they homogenized everything to such an extreme degree that you lose a lot of identity. Yeah. In Classic, the mages are the AoE class. They are. And in current, most classes have pretty amazing AoE. Every class is the AoE classic, class. In Classic, only druids could battle res. And in current, anyone with engineer can battle res. Yeah. The druid was unique because they were so nimble. And now it seems like every class has some sort of insane speed burst or oh crap button. Except big DPS warriors, cooldown, they don't. And so on. And DKs. Everyone can do everything. They still just but die. What's undeniable is that most classes today are harder to play at a very basic level. You're using more combat abilities, and you have more procs to make for a more complex. And what well, the classes are harder to learn in retail. That's the issue. Is that like even if you want to say like the gameplay, like and the rotations are simple whenever you understand them. If like you put a new player in front of classic, and you put a new player in front of uh, in front of BFA, and you give them a max level character. I think it's gonna be a lot easier for somebody to figure out how to play a classic character versus a BFA character. And like that that amount of time that you have to spend learning the class, I think is super important because if you don't have that, then or sorry, if you if you have that so much, then it becomes like people don't want to figure it out they just get overwhelmed like i, I mean it's completely fucking like i, I don't even know what else to say the i think most the people feel it's to be a more interesting rotation yeah in classic there are still intricacies to master yeah particularly in pvp there's a lot of depth i've always said that while the classes in classic are easy to learn they're quite difficult to master mainly talking pvp here we've watched there's more this of a video difference on between a bad before. and a good hunter in classic pvp more yeah. so than there is in current, because I feel with everything being so bursty, there's less room for error. But, as far as DPS rotations are concerned, at the very basic That's top level, DPS, by the which way. is where casual players reside, there it is. they're, uh, very simple. Yeah. But, it's a double-edged sword. I think that's true. You know, the majority of the classes and everything, uh, you know, in Classic are very, very simple. Uh, you know, in terms of, you know, their raid rotations and, you know, the only real intricacies that you need to work into and like move into with classes happens in PvP. Like you can play the entire game in PvE and be a brain dead idiot and you'll be absolutely fine. And by the way, you can do the same thing in PvP and get about, you know, 80% of the way there too and win a lot of fights anyway, especially if you have better gear than somebody. So I, I do think that like in classic, like, you don't have to know that much about the game. You can just basically press your two or three main abilities, and that's about it. And unless you're playing against somebody who's, like, super serious, you, you know, you're gonna... Sometimes you'll come out ahead. I think it's cool that these classes are unique, and that they have their yeah. own roles to fill. But the issue with that is that they have their own roles to fill. There are clear winners and losers, whether it be DPS, yep. tanking, or healing. Warriors are the best tanks. That's true. Retribution Paladins aren't the best DPS. True. Neither are Moonkins. True. This is something that isn't casual friendly. The casual player is very likely to just pick a class and say, Oh, I'm going to be a balanced DPS druid. That's what my mom did. I think that there's a guild for everyone, and with how easy people are going through these raids, you'll be able to find a spot as a balanced druid, certainly. Yeah, but probably. But it's just going to be harder compared Every to, guild say, needs a your star warrior. chicken. And I mentioned PvP earlier. As you may have seen already, the PvP in Classic is very bursty. 
Yeah. No more do you see two on two matchups lasting for 20 minutes. Yep. With everyone able to do everything, this is commonplace in the current game. That's why they dampen healing. Just give like eight different fucking counters. Like, that's why, is there's like 150 different counters to each different ability. I mean, that, that's, you've got eight different interrupts, three different stuns, you know, two different full heals, five different defensives on each team, and you've got to play through all of those. It's like a, it's like, it's like a game of literal three-dimensional chess, and it's really, really complex, and unless you play it all the time, you don't know what the fuck's going on. After a certain amount of time in arena, but yeah. in classic, you can blink and you'll be dead. Boom! There it is. There are matchups where you're pretty much guaranteed to lose unless the other player is AFK or something. Okay. Again, this is the way I prefer it. It makes okay. the class composition matter, but it's not very friendly to casuals. Really? You have to admit. And again, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. But casual warriors aren't going to like the fact that frost mages can take them to 100% to 0% in one frost nova, or that fear lasts until you're dead. Yeah. So, it's casual friendly in the sense that these classes are easier to play at a basic level, and not casual friendly due to the balance or lack thereof. I did mention rating though, so let's get into that a bit. Now, if you've been paying attention to the rating scene, you may know that the two raids in Classic, Anixia and the Molten Core, Hard as have fuck. been cleared through quite quickly. Oh, what? Even in week one by the Guild Apes. Whoa, really? They didn't even have a full rate wow. of 60s. That's insane, and they deserve big props for that. For the purposes of this video though, we shouldn't gauge the difficulty of these raids based on the top 1%, or around the average guild, which at the point that this video was made, should just be starting the Molten Core and Anixia. That being said, overall, the raids are easier compared to the first run, which is what most people expected, I think. I do. Well, they're easier than they were in Classic, and I think what Mad Season says right there, raids are easier taking into account Mythic Mode and Current. I think that raids are easier than Heroic Mode too, honestly. Uh, I think that if you took if you took the people that I did uh, the last raid with, right, uh, the Molten Core raid with, I'm pretty sure they would have a hard time clearing Normal Mode. Uh, they, they really had no idea what they were doing. It was a terrible run. And it's like, you can obviously have really, really bad runs like that, but at the same time, you've got to have, I mean, you, you I, I don't even, there are some points where it's like the classic rates are so easy, but there are still some times that people manage to fail and they fail on such a spectacular level. It's just incredible. You think that people overstated a bit? I personally think that people will have a hard time with AQ40 yeah. and Xtramus in particular. The difficulty in raiding with Classic isn't necessarily complexity with the boss fights. Yeah. They're pretty straightforward. They sure are. Like, you don't really need deadly boss mobs in Classic, no. I feel. It's more just from raw execution and trying to manage the super spiky damage. But with 15 years of experience under our belts this time, and not to mention the advent of YouTube and just ease of information in general, such as gearing lists, and having they're definitely easier. Are better than Game Boys. So, it's casual friendly in that aspect, yes. but there's another side to it. The good thing of not having four difficulties in raiding is that there's one Ragnaros. Yep. There's no LFR Ragnaros, no normal, heroic, mythic, you just Ragnaros. That? Ragnaros is and purple if you can't and beat him, you can't beat him. There's no alternative. If you don't get a piece of loot that week, you can't downgrade to a less powerful version. Stop, don't even and show that. this is that. a good thing, I think, because Stop. you maintain the sense of it being a world Jeez. with one path to completion. Okay. As convenient as LFR is to have, with it assuring that everyone sees the content, in my opinion, it delegitimizes the rating scene as a whole, it does. and it allows you to skip the whole guild searching and social process, which are crucial in MMOs. In Classic, it was a big deal to work together with your guild, then attune and gear up and get to know each other. Well, yeah, because it delegitimizes everything. Like, it's like you kill Ragnaros on Heroic. Like, who cares? Oh, you didn't do it on Mythic, idiot. It's like, oh, well, you killed Ashara. Oh, well, you did it on Normal Mode. You haven't even done it on Heroic yet? And then after you do it on Heroic, who cares? Because you didn't do it on Mythic. And then you do it on Mythic, and it's like, oh, well, you didn't kill it fast enough. It's just there's you can never win. You never feel good about succeeding. That's the problem. It is like, it, with the raids, you have one difficulty of the fucking raids. You do the raid, the raid's done. That's it. You don't need to reinvent the fucking wheel. That, that's, my, that's my opinion on it, right? Is Moomkin a picture has to be private server? No, this is actual vanilla, I'm pretty sure. And finally, get into these raids and see Ragnaros or Anixia. Yeah. So, it's a weird story going on with raiding here. 
with how straightforward it is, it's more casual friendly. Yep. But due to there just uh, being one to show difficulty him? in OLFR, yeah. it's not casual friendly. So give each side a point here, I guess. Well, it's not lazy friendly. Since we touched on it a little bit, let's talk more about gearing. Yeah. This is pretty similar to rating it because it's not such a straightforward thing. All right. The gearing in Classic is more straightforward. That's why people like it. There's no LFR, Bone Reaver's Edge, yep. can't Titan Forge, it yep. can't proc Speed, Leech, yep. and Socket. You get Bone Reaver's Edge, that's the best one you can get. Period. You're done. Done. And say what you want about the Azerite Armor and Titan Forging systems, you have to relent that it is more complicated. It is. There are always so traits and abilities which are considered the best, but they are still more complicated than Classic Gearing. Just the fact that best in slot lists exist for Classic, not really current, should say enough. So, classic gearing is... Cap that's, that's a good point. Uh, you know, gearing in, in retail WoW is, like, much more of a gray area. You know, it's very hard for you to know, okay, well, this is good, this is bad, this is why, this is why it's not, you know? And, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree. Uh, everything to waste players' time and monopolize them? Well, yeah, it's just, like, all these little things to waste your time in retail WoW, whereas, like, classic everything, you know, and, and to some degree it feels like you're working towards, uh, you know, a goal, whereas, like, in retail you're just working towards a slot machine. Like, I... I I, I don't know. Like, as I said, I, I'm really excited to see what they're going to say this year with BlizzCon because I feel like there are so many people that are in my shoes and they feel the exact same way about like the way that Retail WoW is just uh, basically a slot machine with so many different elements. And I really think that they're going to kind of tone that shit down in the next expansion because I, I just can't see them not doing it. I well, mean, they've said two. They've said two things so far that yeah, have been kind of nice. They've said. They've insinuated that something is going to happen to Titan Forging, yeah, and that they they said that the pruning might have gone too far, and that they will look into, uh, you know, reeling it back and putting some back some abilities. So, those two things alone, it tells me that maybe they're reconsidering a lot of their design choices, and maybe they're pushing it in a better direction but we'll have to see. We'll have to see. But I totally agree. I mean, I, I think what I'm waiting to see is I want to see them give you deterministic gear. That is what I want. Azerite gear was a very good first step. Azerite gear, for all of its fallbacks and setbacks and everything, is deterministic. You get the Azerite gear at 415 or 445 or whatever the fuck it is now, and that is it. You cannot upgrade it really besides like getting the pieces on it. There is nothing random about it, and I like that. Casual friendly yep, in those true. aspects, but on the flip side, if you can't kill Ragnaros, you can't kill him, like I said. Yeah. Which you may laugh at now, since again, people have been kind of blowing through these raids. Yeah. But what if it's Cthun or Kel'Thuzad? Again, only time will tell, but if you're talking about the casual player, I think they could have a pretty tough time with these raids. What's well, because they're dumb. Just having one path to this loot, and also something I haven't mentioned yet, is no personal loot, which has yeah. been a rude awakening for a lot of people. It sure has That's been, right. like In grenades. Classic, you have to compete against others for your loot, which with 40-man rating has been pretty interesting to say the least. Yep. Now, I am on the streamer server, which is always going to be 200% more spicy, yes. but already there's been a ton of drama with who gets what, ninjas abound, and at the end of the day, not enough loot to go around. Okay. These bosses drop just can say me, all right? for 40 people, so it's inevitable that butts yeah, will can be just hurt, say me. and it's not a very casual friendly thing. And that's not even getting into the more abundant enchants and the whole world mm -hmm. buff situation, which is a whole other story. So let's again just give a point to each side here. Casual friendly in the sense of how straightforward gearing is, and not casual friendly in the method of obtaining that gear. Okay. Let's talk that, about that's leveling. Agreeable. All of this stuff. Class balance, rating, gearing, PvP, and so on comes after leveling, so we probably should have talked about this first, in fact. But this is a category that most would put in the non-casual. Back then, it was super casual, like I mentioned, with no permanent death, item loss, or even XP loss. But as I said, standards have changed. And I think, like, casual, unfriendly, and everything, in terms of, like, leveling taking longer, and everything like that, I think that only is true in the context of 
making the goal of the game getting to 60. Because there are a lot of people who like leveling and just playing the game and adventuring through it and don't necessarily have an in-game mindset. And it's like whenever they're playing the game, their primary goal is not to get the 60. Nowadays, I think that a lot of people that play Classic, their goal is to get immediately to 60. But there are a lot of people who just say, hey, you know what, let's relax and just play the game and see how far I get. And I think that element of, his, of it is casual, but yeah, if you're trying to get to max level as fast as possible, of course WoW Classic is more unfriendly because it takes way longer. And casual today has a different meaning. If you want to compare it directly to the current game, does oh, it get great. any more casual than straight up being able to buy levels? Yeah. And that's not even getting into heirlooms, dungeon finder, no group quests, mm -hmm. no war mode to toggle PvP off if you're getting ganked, all questing content being soloable, Gold being easier to obtain, even yep. being straight up purchasable, which makes okay. mounts easier to get. You can stop. Flying mounts okay. and much more. Yeah. Okay. Too much to go into detail. And okay. Honestly, you've probably heard all of this a hundred times. Yes. But suffice to say, the leveling in classic is harder. Not just more time consuming, but also harder. No longer can you just pull five mobs at once and never stop to eat or drink. Sometimes you have to stop you and did. think. Like, hmm, do I really want to pull these two murlocs? Well, I'm a warrior, so I guess not. Let's just play it safe. And then they show so, up anyway. taking into account that this is Fuck a mandatory em. thing in Classic, I don't think we can consider it very casual friendly. Oh, grats. I personally think that it's kind of exaggerated sometimes how difficult it is to level. But still, I think it's hard enough to where most casual players will have a tough time with it, depending on their class. Taking There's like some, there's some times where Classic leveling is genuinely hard. But you have to like get a group. Like that's the thing is it's hard solo and it's like for example there are like non-elite quest areas that are really hard to go through as a level appropriate player i think the best example of this is like the you know like the place where you have to rescue uh like captain or colonel or whatever Keyshawn in red ridge mountains and you have all those black rock champions and like the black rock uh the orcs and everything and the reason why that's very hard for a solo player is because it aggro they're all they always aggro another one like you you pull one and it aggroes two you pull one and it aggroes three which is more like it and it's difficult to do for like a warrior for example or like a rogue uh, for the most part i mean obviously there are some people that are able to do it sure but for an average player i'd consider it very challenging so i mean for for something like that yeah of, of course it's a lot harder but if you go in there with a group it's a fucking joke and i think that's the thing that uh, a lot of people don't take into consideration with leveling and like the difficulty with leveling is that if you play with a group and you play the way that blizzard i think probably intended you to play then you shouldn't have too much trouble it's hard when the mobs heal themselves yeah there's that too into account not only the difficulty of the mobs but the other stuff i mentioned like the time consuming traveling yep. the lack of gold spell training and so on and that's not even getting into the more miscellaneous stuff, such as the greater need for grouping and interacting with people, yep. professions being tougher to level, weapon skills, the PvP system being an insane grind, mm -hmm. no gear tokens to catch you up so you can skip raid tiers, and it goes on and on and on. So, what conclusion can we draw here? Yeah. Well, as what I said in the beginning, MMOs are too complex of a genre to put into these neat little arbitrarily defined baskets. It does really depend on how They're you play the game. not as simple as an FPS game a good or point. an NES side-scroller, which I drew comparisons to in the beginning of the video. They're tremendously huge worlds filled with a hundred different things to do and a hundred different kinds of people to meet, some of them casual friendly and others not so much. The reason why people love classic so much is that it satisfies both crowds. If you consider yourself part of the hardcore crowd, you'll find several things to invest hundreds and hundreds of hours into, whether it be your gear, your professions, gold making, PvP, ERP, or whatever. Or, if you can only play on the weekends, you'll slowly level your character to 60. And by now take you'll a few be months, level 30. But you'll get there, and you'll make some friends along the way, maybe join a guild, eh, and do some maybe. dungeons endgame. Who knows, maybe even some casual raiding. Good. Classic Good. is casual friendly. And it's also casual and friendly. Now, there's another thing, right? Is like, do you know what's a really good advertisement for wanting to join a guild? Watching my MC run last time. You watch that, and there's nobody that sees that that doesn't say, okay, I want to join a guild now.
This is ridiculous. And it's like, that's why, that's why guilds are so great is because obviously you can have like runs where, you know, you have half the raid that can't understand one mechanic. And you're like, man, can I please just join a guild of people that know what they're doing? And that's the whole reason why people do it. I think that in Classic, it became much more of a thing. If you're looking for an answer to the question, is Classic more casual friendly than current? It's a subjective thing, but yeah. I personally think it is. No daily emissaries, no daily world quests, table missions, incursions, war fronts, island expeditions, four difficulties of raiding. Nothing to give you the sense of urgency that you must do these things yeah. or you're missing out. There's beauty in simplicity, which is a lost art in modern MMOs, I think. And games That's why Classic in general, has been so popular, opinion. and one of the reasons why there's such a big demand to bring it back. Overly complex for However no you reason. define it, I hope you at least found the video entertaining or interesting. Like it if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I agree. I agree. I think this is, uh, overall, I think Fair WoW well Classic now, is more cla uh, more casual, though. We hope you enjoyed today's video. Yeah, I, I, I uh, See you I, again, soon. Do you actually get hand a rag? No, no, that's an, that's another server, probably like his retail character. Uh, I'll link the video to you guys since it just came out. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the wow head thing. I'll look at that in a bit. Let me just go ahead and look at these real quick. Okay. The whole pressure to do content thing is the only reason why I don't play retail anymore, but damn, is it a big one? Yeah, I agree too. Yeah. You just feel pressured to do everything and you're getting behind. And the thing is that whenever you get ahead in retail, the only thing you have to look forward to is just waiting for Blizzard to catch everybody else up in the future. It's just like, what the fuck? Like you spend all this time trying to get caught up to everybody else and then you finally get caught up and then you're back down to square one because they introduce new patch that resets all your fucking gear and it's like how am I, how am i supposed to handle that what am i well, what the fuck is this it's crazy uh, i i can't even i i really don't like that at all all right uh game might not be casual friendly but the players yeah well the players are not casual friendly either to be honest uh, there's beauty and simplicity well well said i agree with that entirely uh yes very no patches that adds new item level on azurite farm well the patches do add new item level but the reason why the new item level doesn't matter in the same way that class Classic doesn't is because in whenever you add tier two into the game you still have to do tier one to do tier two so it makes a completely different uh a completely different structure of the game whenever you have to do one raid to do another raid because if you add a new difficulty or a new level on top of that that new level only really impacts the people that are on the level right under it so if you're like if they introduce new content at let's say level 50 that doesn't impact you if you're level 40 at all. But in retail WoW, if they introduce something at level 50, they would have it to where it scales all the way down to 40, and you can do it at level 40, and it gives better gear than the level 40 dungeons that you were doing before they added the level 50 scaled down dungeon. That's why. And so hopefully Blizzard will understand this and start to realize, you know, the systems that they've created. Uh, was this complex? I, mean, I, I don't know. Hopefully I explained that well. But uh, hopefully that they'll understand the systems they've created have ended up backfiring in a lot of ways and I, I hope that this is what happens in blizzcon right now obviously like how many expansions like okay is wad gonna be the expansion that saves wow is bfa gonna be the expansion all right legion is gonna finally save wow miss of pandaria listen guys i understand it's a little bit off the wall but this is the game that's gonna save wow this is it and, and at, a, at a certain period of time yes obviously you know people become fatigued but i think because legion was genuinely good generally good right not genuinely good but generally good I, I think that people are kind of expecting bfa to be better and i think that also because legion went pretty well people know that blizzard can make an, a good expansion and so that's why they're still holding on you know that i think that's really it i, I think legion sucked in a thousand different ways man but uh there were some ways that it didn't suck in as well